What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. So last week, I made a video about how Jacob Wheeler found and caught his fish during the Major League Fishing Tournament on Lake Eufaula. And after I posted the video, I got a lot of comments from guys saying that I left out a really important factor and the most important factor in how Jacob Wheeler won the event. And that was his live scope from his Garmin unit and the 360 imaging from his Hummingbird unit. And when I read these comments, I got a little bit frightened because I feel like most of my viewers are misunderstanding the actual applications of these forward-facing sonars and they're not giving enough credit to what actually helped Jacob win the tournaments. And so in this video, I want to explain the actual uses for live scope, 360 imaging, and live site technology, what they can do, but more importantly, what they can't do or what they shouldn't be used for if you're going to be an efficient and effective offshore fisherman. So let's get into it. Okay, so first up, I wanna let you guys know that I was very hesitant at first to make this video because I felt like it could be very opinionated and it was just my word against your word. But fortunately, Jacob actually posted on his Instagram some images from his side imaging units of the schools of fish he found during this tournament, the actual winning spot. And one thing that a lot of guys were having issues with in my last video is that they didn't believe that Jacob was finding his fish with the side imaging technology. They thought he was finding his fish with the live scope and the 360 imaging. And if we had to break down a Venn diagram of how Jacob succeeded on Lake Eufaula, I felt like a lot of guys in the comments were making it sound like 50% of the reason Jacob won was because of 360 imaging and live scope. Then maybe 30% was because of his ability to find fish and just his overall skill. And then maybe 20% to his other units you know, side imaging, down imaging, things like that. And if I had to make a Venn diagram based on my experience fishing with pros, fishing with Jacob actually before, and just understanding how sonars and things work, I would say that 50% of his win was because of how Jacob understands fish behavior, fish movement, and offshore fishing. 40% was his ability to read his side imaging and down imaging on his Lowrance and Hummingbird units, and 10% was his ability to use the live scope and 360 imaging units. And so I want to explain why I believe that the live scope and the 360 imaging weren't that important in Jacob's win, or at least as important as you guys may be made out in the comments, not everyone, but obviously just a few people, and they did on the broadcast Major League Fishing. And I also wanna to talk to you about when live scope and 360 imaging is actually super useful and can contribute to your success fishing offshore by looking at a couple other tournaments in recent history that guys use that technology to win. So let's jump into it. Okay, so to start off, let's really break down how Jacob actually found his fish on Lake Eufaula. And I'm actually gonna use graphics this time and really explain how Jacob did it because, I, again, there's a lot of confusion out there thinking that he found his fish using live sight or live scope and the 360 imaging. And basically, Jacob was just fishing an offshore point that was in like eight or nine feet of water. In my video last week, I mentioned that he most likely found these fish by just graphing down the side of this point using his side imaging and identifying the fish on his side imaging unit. And if we take a look at these images he posted on Instagram, that looks like exactly what he did. He mentioned that before he fished the spot, he graphed over it, he saw some fish on his side imaging and he actually said that during the live broadcast as well. And now these are images from after he fished the spot and he broke up the school and caught like 20 fish. And so he found these fish initially with his side imaging. And I just made a video just a couple days ago about how to actually find fish on your side imaging unit if these images don't make any sense. So check out that video. It'll definitely help you find more fish with side imaging. And this is how he knew that there was a school of fish on this offshore point with the side imaging. Then what he did is he would pull up onto this area and he would cast at a waypoint that he marked on his graph. Basically, you would see a school on the graph uh, you would move your cursor over to where you see that school of fish. You're going to drop your waypoint and then you're going to go up to the front of the boat and your waypoint will transfer from the back graph up to the front graph and you can cast on the spot. And I've made a video about how to hit offshore uh, spots on every cast using this approach in another video. So check that video out as well if you want to know how to make sure you're hitting these offshore targets that you drop a waypoint on. And 
this is really all there was to it. Now, a lot of guys were thinking that he was using the 360 imaging and the live scope to actually point his transducer's beam at the spot and then see the fish appear on the 360 imaging and on the live scope technology. But if we take a look at Jacob's actual boat position when he was fishing the school of fish from some of the footage from the event, you can see that Jacob's boat is pointed in the opposite direction of where he's actually casting. The nose of the boat is pointing kind of, if we were taking a look at the spot, almost to the east, and then his spot is over to the west. And so what this means is that the front nose of his boat is not even pointing at the place he's casting at. And if you guys understand how the live scope at least works, what you'll know is that the live scope transducer on a lot of these guys' units is mounted to the trolling motor shaft. So wherever the trolling motor arrow is pointing, that's where the beam of the live scope transducer is going to be pointing and that's where you're gonna read the image. So if we take a look at Jacob's boat here, really he's scanning the area that's out in front of his boat here with his live scope. He's not even scanning the area where the fish are where he's casting. Now, he may have been able to see some of these fish with the 360 imaging, but still, he's seeing these fish on the 360 imaging, but he also has that waypoint there. And so while it may help him dial in a little bit on the cast with the 360 imaging, it's still kind of hard sometimes to look at the 360 imaging and then hit your exact cast. And just in case you're not convinced that I know what I'm talking about, Jacob just posted a video of his tournament day on Lake Eufaula. And if you take a look at some of the images from this video, you'll notice that when he shows his front three graphs on the front deck of his boat, he's never running 360 imaging on his front graphs. His Humberd unit always just has mapping pulled up. And this is just really interesting because everyone was saying 360 imaging was the thing that helped Jacob win this tournament. And he doesn't even have it pulled up here. But if we take a look at his graph when he's just driving around, you can actually see that he's pointing out fish on his down imaging he sees in a brush pile and he actually makes a call out like this. There's a couple of big ones on it. See him? Oh, yeah. I just want to let me let that boat drift off. So just to be clear and just in my opinion, the most efficient and effective way for finding and catching bass with these different sonars is to use the side imaging and the down imaging to locate the fish. And this is because you can drive your boat at three to four miles an hour and cover a lot more water while you're on the big engine. And then once you get up to a spot, you will drop the waypoints. So you kind of have the general area of where these fish are. Then you can use your 360 imaging and your live scope to really dial in your cast. But the only thing that that forward facing sonar is doing for you is it's helping you pinpoint that cast on specific logs or sticks or brush piles you can still hit those same areas using the old waypoint method and you can still catch a lot of fish doing that. What I would say is that maybe that live scope technology might help you catch one or two extra fish out of a school over the course of an entire day. But it's not going to take you from a fisherman who has never caught a fish offshore before to an expert angler. What you have to do first is find those fish with the side imaging, then mark that waypoint, and then use the technology to dial in your cast. And I feel like some guys were thinking that Jacob was actually going around with maybe his trolling motor down or something and scanning all of these offshore areas with his live sight, live scope, and with the 360 imaging to tell the fish are there. But that's not the case. Jacob's good enough with his side scan, his side imaging technology to know there are fish there using his graphs by the steering wheel. He doesn't have to drop the troll motor down and use the live scope or use a 360 imaging to identify bass. It all comes down to understanding your electronics, knowing what you're looking at on side scan, and trying to just be as efficient as possible. These guys only have two days to practice on these events, so they have to be as efficient as they can, and driving at three or four or five miles an hour with the back graph and side scan is a way more efficient way of finding fish, and then you'll use the other forward-facing technologies to dial in that cast. And so, at least my opinion is that Jacob would have been able to catch these fish regardless of whether he had the live scope technology or the 360 imaging just by using his side imaging 
transducer and the side between grafts on the back and then dropping a waypoint and casting at that school of fish. And this is what I do when I fish offshore in less than 10 foot of water and scan fish. You can just drop a waypoint and cast on them. And when you're dealing with a school of fish that's massive, Jacob had a school that was 30, 40, 50 fish big, there's a pretty wide margin for error. He can cast 10 or 15 feet to the right or to the left. You don't need that pinpoint accuracy casting. And that's kind of the advantage of having that live scope and the 360 imaging is that you can see on the graphs exactly where a brush pile is or some stumps or even a specific group of fish. But this school of fish was so big, it didn't really matter if he could see them on the live scope of the 360 imaging. He was just casting at the top of the point and there were just a bunch of fish up there and he was catching them. And one thing I want to call out is that I do know that Jacob didn't catch all of his fish off of these big schools of fish like I'm showing in this example. He did catch a lot of his fish off of smaller isolated pieces of cover like brush piles or the corner of a roadbed, stuff like that. That might require a little bit more pinpoint accuracy casting. And the live scope and the 360 imaging will help you make those more pinpoint accuracy casts and make you more efficient. And that's why I gave 10% of the credit for this tournament win to those forward facing sonars. Jacob did use them to catch fish. It just wasn't the main factor in his win. It was 10% of the reason you won, not 50% of the reason you won. So I just want to make sure that that's clear and that everyone understands that. It's not that the technology is bad, doesn't work. It's just that it wasn't as big of a player in the event as the commentators and people in the fishing community are making it out to be. The actual technology is not what allowed Jacob to win this tournament. It's his understanding of bass behavior. It's his understanding of how to read his side imaging units. And I mean, I use a Hummingbird Onyx unit that's now seven years old. And that unit still works great for me. I can still see fish on the side imaging. I can still see them just like Jacob was on his units. So you don't even need a brand new unit to do this. You can do it with seven year old technology. The biggest thing is understanding how to actually interpret your side imaging, which takes lots of time and studying and practice. And you know, this is, many of you guys know, a lot of people are just looking for that new piece of technology, that new bait, that new thing to buy that's gonna immediately make them a better fisherman. But the truth about most things in life is that if you really wanna get better and you want to be successful, it takes hard work, it takes studying, it takes lots of trial and error and failure to get better. And that's why Jacob was able to go find these fish. It wasn't because he bought this new 360 imaging or this new live scope and that allowed him to find all these fish. No, it was Jacob's skill and Jacob's experience that allowed him to do this. So I know that this is kind of just one big rant, but I really want to make sure this is clear because I have seen guys struggle that I go in on the water fishing lessons with buy all of these different transducers and units. I've used all of these before several times. I've caught fish using all of these several times probably 10 times a piece. And I know the limitations and the challenges with them. And most guys, they're like, oh, okay, this technology is kind of cool, but it maybe wasn't worth the $3,000 to buy a big unit and hook it all up and all that stuff for the average fisherman. Now, if you're gonna be offshore fishing all the time, that's all you're gonna be doing that might be somewhat useful. And I do wanna get into one example where the live scope technology from Garmin was very critical to a recent tournament win. And that is Cody Huff's tournament win on Toledo Bend Reservoir in Texas. And Cody Huff is a college angler. He was fishing the college series tournament on Toledo Bend. And he was catching his fish basically off long main lake points that dropped off into deep creek channels. And I actually talked with a few buddies who saw Cody out there, and he basically said that Cody found his fish up on top of these points on Toledo Bend in practice, but what happened is that for whatever reason throughout the tournament, those fish pulled off the points and started suspending over the deep creek channels. And he couldn't catch any fish on like a jig or a Carolina rig or a crankbait on top of the points, but he was still able to actually see fish on his live scope out in front of the boat they were suspended in this creek channel. And he was taking a jigging spoon and he was pitching it to these fish and also throwing a swim bait out to these fish. And he was able to actually pinpoint his cast because he could move that live scope transducer left and right and see where those fish were. And he probably wouldn't have been able to catch nearly as many fish as he did in this tournament and then win the tournament if he didn't have the live scope technology. And he also then took this momentum and won a Toyota series event for the FLW as well on the same exact lake doing the exact same thing with the jigging spoon. And so this is a case where I would say about 50% of Cody's win was 
due to the live scope and the uh, imaging technology he had in the front of his boat. But still, I would say about 40% of it was Cody's skill and understanding of his graph, and then maybe 10% was his understanding of the other units. And so, basically, there are situations that the live scope technology is very helpful, and it does help you catch fish. It just wasn't the factor in Jacob Wheeler's win, and I wanted to make this clear because I didn't want everyone going out buying live scope units live set units, 360 imaging units, with the expectation that they're going to be able to go find 10 times more fish if they're using these units. And so hopefully this video made sense. Hopefully I don't get a ton of dislikes. I know I'm still going to get a bunch of dislikes and guys are going to be like, well, you're not a pro. You don't know what you're talking about. You're an idiot. And I, I know that's the comments I get on YouTube, unfortunately, because I'm young and I'm not a proven tour pro. But I have fished with a lot of tour pros over the years and I do feel like I have at least some understanding of how this stuff works enough to make a video about it. I wouldn't just make this video just to lead you guys astray and just to try to get clicks or views. The reason I'm making this video and putting myself out there, putting this opinion out there is because I want to make sure that you guys fully understand what you're dealing with. You're not wasting your money and you're not setting unreal expectations. That's the big thing. Not setting your expectations way out of bounds, then not going out and succeeding and then getting discouraged and giving up on offshore fishing, giving up on fishing in general and just getting frustrated. So hopefully this video is helpful to you guys. Hopefully it all made sense. I did this all in one take too. That's crazy. I, I've been thinking about this for like a while guys. I was like, hot after the, the, I read all those comments because I was like, no, everyone's getting this wrong. So I'm glad Jacob posted that post and I'm glad I was able to kind of explain this to you guys. So thanks again for checking out the video. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see y'all next one.